The following podcast contains adult language, profound stupidity, hardcore nudity, and drug references. Children should not listen to it. Everyone else but fucking Olive. Nailed it. Podcast where we three gamers discuss video game stories in detail with all the necessary and appropriate backlash. My name is Papa Scotch, and with me, as always, is Chump Slap. Uh, you got me go. <laughs> <laughs> and on the other side of the table, Doctor Scientist. That's right. When a van with a cactus airbrush on the side pulls up outside your house, and a guy with a Fu Manchu mustache hands you a case of Coke bottles with wine, you know you're in Mandavi country. <laughs> That was a long one, but I love it. Yeah. <laughs> Fantastic. Love the personalized intros. So uh, where do you often find your inspiration for those, uh, Dr. Scientists? Uh, memory. Oh, you Okay, fine. <laughs> Whatever. But uh, <laughs> more importantly than that, I finally beat the main story in Borderlands. It's about fucking time. Woo! Yep, yep. It only took me – when did the game come out? That was like three months ago. No, come on oh, now. No, it was two months ago. <laughs> You're trying to make me Six feel weeks. bad. Uh, and I should, but yeah, I finally beat the story and I won't get into it cause I'm sure we will talk about it heavily on this podcast at some point. Right. Yeah. Now you got to get to level 50 so we can play the DLC that comes out in a couple of weeks. I should be able to do, I got some vacation coming up, so I, w- I won't let you down, sir. Get up to guardian rank a hundred by the end of it. <laughs> oh, really? Yep. Great. 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 Now the first 30 should go pretty quick. Whatever. Okay. So, uh, yeah, I might as well get into it. I guess uh, what all this cool stuff I did this week, that was pretty much it. But uh, <laughs> <laughs> What's the uncool stuff you did? I just caught up on some TV. Like, I watched new episodes of South Park. And, uh, are there new ones? Yeah, there was the one with uh, the Halloween special. Oh. I, I haven't watched a South Park during the Trump presidency. Um, they're doing some interesting stuff. The Halloween special was an all Randy episode, so it was pretty great. <laughs> Can't go wrong. No, yeah. absolutely not. Absolutely not. Um, other than that, I just watched a little bit of uh, American Horror Story, 1984. I hear it's good. Ah, uh, I'm invested. I'm I'm pretty interested. I'd say. I say it's so not far going so as good. Far to say it's good. Okay. It's yeah. so far <laughs> it's so good, but you know it could go either way. Some of these seasons, you know, they aren't as good as the others. But we'll see. Uh, other than that, movies? Did I watch any? I didn't go on any horror movie marathons this week. <laughs> Loser. So, <laughs> got nothing to report there. Uh, other than that, geez, not much going on. Catching up on Mr. Robot, I guess. Uh, played Borderlands 3. Started the new Call of Duty Modern Warfare campaign. Oh, yeah? It's, uh, you didn't finish it? No, I just, just started it. <laughs> Barely started it. Figure it'd only be like two hours. Does it look awesome? Um, it looks very pretty. We'll say that. And it plays like every other Call of Duty game. It's definitely more like uh, cinematic. Like they're trying to make it more of an action movie. That's cool. But I guess they've always I been guess. doing that lately. It's 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 working for me so far. We'll we'll see where it goes. But uh, that's that's really all I got. What about you, uh, Doctor Scientist? What have you been playing, watching, doing? What's going on over there? Ah, played a little bit of Borderlands. I beat the Medieval remake. Platinumed it. Nice, nice. It wasn't very hard. Uh, I started Darksiders 3. It's pretty good. I like it. Have you, It's a little different. Have you played it before, or is this like a, another run-through, or is this the first time you're the, playing it? This is the first time I'm playing it. It only came out a couple months ago. Oh, okay. Cool. Uh, I don't think I watched anything all week. Maybe the, I did watch the new Watchmen. Someone's got to watch the Watchmen. Yeah, yeah nice. I did. <laughs> <laughs> nice, nice. Uh, I I can't think of anything else I even saw on TV. Fair. Yeah, I've been super busy, so I haven't really watched as much. I guess you're the same with work and everything. Yeah, and work's gonna be even worse next week. So. Yeah, the, nice. the holidays will get you, huh? <laughs> I uh, sure. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, how about you, uh, Chump Slap? What have you been playing, watching, doing? What's going on with you? 
Well, I didn't really play anything this week. Maybe a little Borderlands, but nothing of note. I watched a couple movies. How many Nicolas Cage movies did you watch? Probably only like two. What? Yeah. Slow week, huh? <laughs> sure was. He had a wedding to go to. Yeah. I saw Crawl. Do you see Crawl? Oh, it's been a while. <laughs> I know it's he throws so the glaive. That weird. What, did you watch the shitty ones he saw? Uh, Centipede Man or whatever. Oh, the fuck I watched it was. Death Spa. Yeah. <laughs> what are your thoughts on Death Spa? I want to hear that. It was, it was something. <laughs> it was a movie. <laughs> sure was a movie in the eighties. Yeah, like, that's about I all know. I got from it too. That made sense. Yeah, it was all right. I mean, I think I fell asleep during it. I don't, I don't, think, I don't know what part you fell asleep during, but you didn't miss much. Like it's not gonna, <laughs> it's not gonna make sense if you rewatch the whole thing. Let's put it that way. Yeah, maybe I will. Just, <laughs> just to make sure. Just to, but just to show me. I watched the uh, In the Shadow of the Moon. You see that? It's like a time travel Netflix movie. No, how is it? It's actually pretty good. Can't complain. In the Shadow of the Moon, huh? In the Shadow of the Moon. Maybe I'll watch that one. Might be the first movie you ever said I thought about watching. Yeah, I think you'd dig it. Anything with time travel is pretty good. It's fun. Yeah, it's hard to screw that up, huh? Unless you continuity destroy yourself. Yeah. Is it as good as time crimes? Nothing is as good as time crimes. That's fair. Okay. But that's it. Slow week here, too. We're pretty fucking exciting, huh? I was just going to say we're (laughs) killing it. (laughs) Absolutely destroying it. Well... Throw some news at us, at least. I, I do have some news, some fun news, some sad news, other news. Uh, the first <laughs> thing, let's get into Chump Slap's number one favorite game, which he quoted as saying, Fallout 76 is in the news again, and no. uh, not for the not the good kind of news that you want. Um, Porn? <laughs> no, it's way worse. So, do you remember... Uh, when I told you last week that they were starting that premium service for twelve bucks a month and a hundred bucks for a year, shit, yeah. Okay, well now, I'm stoked. <laughs> yeah, they they have like custom emotes that are only for that tier. So now players are getting targeted in the world if they as they should <laughs> if they show that emote. <laughs> they're getting like their reports no one can confirm it for sure obviously but there's a bunch of reports of people like doing an emote you can only do if you're one of those members and then getting asked to leave the server or <laughs> like getting beaten up and killed and their place is ruined just because <laughs> that's kind of funny actually well, it's like what did you yeah. think was gonna happen yeah seriously so that's hilarious. Uh, the other bad thing there's about Fallout 7. Oh, that, that was hilarious, and it was a bad thing? <laughs> well, for them. To for them. Bethesda, it's okay. not going to look good. But uh, another thing that came up is the fact that in Australia, the company ZeniMax, who owns Bethesda, they uh, are forcing p- them to give refund- refunds for Fallout 76 from people. Like the just anyone who bought the game can – Get a refund? Uh, I believe that is what the case is. Why? Uh, because they're advertising, and I guess in Australia, if you're unhappy with a the product, their version of the FCC has to, legally, you have to give a refund if there's a case for it. And they said that everything in the, the marketing and everything was misleading. So because of that misleading marketing, the Australian Competition and Consumer Protection Commission... Oh, yes. Is acknowledging... Oh, yeah, the OCAC. <laughs> the, they said that ZeniMax acknowledged that they were they were likely to have misled consumers about the consumer guarantee rights in relation to the online action game. Basically, they never, I guess, hit it hard enough where it's always online, and people didn't like it, and they went to return it, and now they have to get refunded. Uh, Man. Well, if you return it, I guess you should get a refund. I mean... Think well, they must be happy they're not Americans then, because it's just buyer beware here. <laughs> yeah, right. Right. So, Fallout seventy six again in the news for for bad reasons for them. Killing it. It's really <laughs> crushing. Yeah. It. Uh, another update from last week. Remember when I told you about those Ubisoft games that got delayed? 
It rings a little bit of a bell. Gods yeah. and Monsters, Watchdog Legion, Rainbow Six, fourteen. Yeah. Um, it turns out that I believe one of us had the guess that they were going to come out for PS5. So yes, sir. Ubisoft clarified and said that those games will be released on 4 and 5 at the same time. Boom. Called it. Yeah. And what, when's 5 supposed to come out? At the end of next year? Yeah, holidays next year. Next year. So that's Gods and Monsters, Watch Dogs, Legion, and Rainbow Six Quarantine, and Not two other games that have yet to be announced. Also, two games they didn't even announce. Or, <laughs> yeah. How do you push delayed? back a game that wasn't announced yet? They pushed it. I don't know. They didn't. They didn't <laughs> delay it. I think those might have been planned to be announced or uh, okay. planned for that time of year, actually. So I don't know. We'll see. Uh, what other news? I got another news. Uh, remember when I was telling you last week? A lot of updates this week. <laughs> Interesting. A lot of new news about old shit, but uh. Remember when I told you last week that PlayStation View, Sony was looking to find a buyer for it? Yes. Well, it turns out they have announced that it is shutting down January 30th. <laughs> Nobody <laughs> wanted to buy it, I guess. Yeah, I guess they said that. Well, I don't guess. they. The numbers that came out for streaming services like Hulu are around the 2 million mark, 2 million active subscribers. Okay. And a lot of like Hulu TV and YouTube Live TV are around 200 or not 200, uh, 2 million each. And uh, PlayStation View was at five hundred thousand for most of its run. Eh. 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 Well, it fucking yeah. sucks for me because now I got to find another service, and I guess yeah, I have something to go else with... that gives you cable, right? It's just the only channel I really want to have for sure is the NHL Network, which means I either have to go to Directv now or Sling TV. <sighs> My God. But you guys just won't ever understand my pain. I think that's the problem here. No, yeah. I don't get it. It's first world problems. But, uh, I'm sorry. So those are my updates of previous things. Um, the other thing I wanted to discuss is, have you guys heard about the blizzard issue going on with ho the Hong Kong protests? Yeah, where they like got rid of a guy. They took his awards away or something. Yeah, he was a Hearthstone player, which I guess is like a card game? Yeah. Like magic yeah. type? Well, it's just a card game, I guess we could say. But uh, one of the champions from it won a contest and then said something that supported Hong Kong democracy. And then Blizzard suspended him for a year and took away all his 2019 prize money. That's fair. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, they're a private company. They can do whatever they want. Yeah. They shouldn't expect backlash either. Yeah. No. <laughs> well, there was a lot of backlash. Surprise, surprise. <laughs> you kidding me? Well, that's the that's the thing that happens when you're a company and you do that kind of thing. <laughs> yeah. So, basically, the short thing is Blizzard doesn't have the balls to let someone say something that goes against China. They only really care about money and not being censored in China. Oh, they're like a corporation. Yeah. Exactly. Yeah. Obviously. Um, and then they have their BlizzCon, their annual con, like a. Uh, fan conference is going on right now and that's the, being the blizzard protested. conference yeah. yeah so so that's being protested they also right. announced blizzard uh overwatch 2 and diablo 4 got announced yeah they're trying to buy back their customers well i mean that's what companies do all right scientists <laughs> jesus <laughs> it's a free market yeah but uh I'm sure you know six months from now, six months from now, either Blizzard will be out of business or making record sales when Overwatch Two comes out. Uh, I'm guessing on record sales, probably. Yeah, people will forget. Yeah, the news cycle is so quick now that everybody will forget by next week. And that's not going to be the craziest thing we hear in the next week or two. No. Or it will. It never is anymore. I saw. I don't remember what it was, but someone's like California's been burning for the, like two weeks, and it's like the fourth biggest news story. Yeah. The yeah. whole state's on fire. <laughs> well, it's fire season. Yeah, it seems like we happen. do this every year, right? Yeah. Yeah, it seems like fire season gets larger every year, though. I mean, global warming's a hell of a thing. It's a hell of a drug. What are you talking about? It's just made up. Yeah, natural cycles and all. <laughs> 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 the average temperature of the earth goes up and down, guys. <laughs> We've seen it time and time again. Yeah, we'll just <laughs> what we're gonna do is ignore, you know, those fifty thousand or however many scientists that say it's real. Just hey, ignore at them. At least three say it's not, so Yeah, this one says it's not. 
Who? <laughs> not me. I'm not an idiot. You just said it. <laughs> you said it. Great. We times. can agree to disagree. <laughs> Any hoodles. So <laughs> that's that's all my news. The only other thing I really have is uh, Death Stranding got released, and apparently people like it. I am entirely tired of hearing about it already. Yeah, me too. And I don't even... I thought it was out for months already. No. I think it comes out this week, actually. Like, it's not out yet. Like, people got review copies of it. Uh, what are you talking about? It came out two days ago. Yeah. Is this some of the bullshit we're recording before it comes out? Yeah. And you're saying it is? <laughs> I guess we're just, we won't do that illusion? Okay, cool. So. No, I, I, we didn't do it yet. Why would we start now? What are you talking about? All of our data and stuff we give people is totally 100% honest, especially the pick of the week. <laughs> I'm yeah. not. I'm not. Yeah, not I'm not saying that. it's not honest. <laughs> this was recorded but Thursday morning. I don't, I don't know. Death Stranding doesn't appeal to me at all. I really couldn't care any less about it. I haven't Lord. seen much gameplay to make a decision, but I did read in some of the reviews that it's like a hundred hours, and I'm like, I don't. I can't do another long game in a row. It's been like four now. Yeah. What, what kind of game is it? A Kojima game, which makes it not bad it's enough. It's like over the shoulder. Uh, Third person, yeah, good. running around planets, doing some interstellar type bullshit. Uh, I thought it was like a horror game. It sounded like it. It could be. I, I have no idea. We should probably do yeah. some research, but again, that's not really our thing, right? So mm, I'm not going to play it, so I'm not going to research it. I finished it already. Brag. It's all right. <laughs> yeah, because we're in the video game media. We got free advanced copies. Shit, yeah, we did. But if anyone wants to send I thought us we were being an honest podcast. <laughs> <laughs> well, if anyone wants to send us free copies of games to review, we absolutely will. And we you guarantee no positive comments. They send us games, we wouldn't play them by the time. They'd be out for like two weeks before we finished them. Not if I was getting paid to do it. But we wouldn't. to be free copies. They would just... Mm, that's kind of paid. <laughs> <laughs> but, uh... Anyway, that's all the news I got. Anybody have anything they want to discuss? Any topics come out? Anything crazy? Uh, uh, the Borderlands DLC was just announced. That's about it. The free Maliwan DLC that's coming out November 21st. But That's it. It's kind of like a Destiny raid type thing. Oh, neat. I no, saw like really. uh, the news. I, I saw a thing that came out that says, Where is Xur this week? And I'm like, man, I remember when I used to care about that. Yeah, <laughs> wow. Who the fuck is Zer? He is an uh, exotic <laughs> vendor that just shows up on weekends. On Destiny. Oh. Yeah, so like every week people are like, where the fuck is he, where is he, where is he? Oh, he's here. I was thinking Zer the Enchanter. Yes, he's a magic card that shows up in yeah. Destiny. I don't understand what magic cards are, really. Well, it's like this Hearthstone thing. Yeah, <laughs> okay. <laughs> but, but IRL. But IRL. Is the card game, so there's actually enchanters that walk around the playing field yeah it's a guy i mean depends on your imagination but you sure <laughs> yeah i don't think i've never seen cards walking neither around, I, but. but and he actually flies it looks like but i thought he was jumping oh with maybe. joy <laughs> the card looks dumb <laughs> yeah it's really stupid anyway <laughs> <laughs> all right well in that case you guys want to get into this game or what tell us about it yeah. all right um this week, we are going to talk about a game called Ratchet and Clank Going Commando. This I get it. No, no, uh, <laughs> no sound. Okay, that's fine. No, we don't need sound effects it, all the time. In some countries, they had to change the title. Did they really? Yeah. Why? Because commando means something else? Well, going commando means going naked, so they had to change. So they, what, they changed it to like going Ratchet under, and Clank underwearless? <laughs> Just named it two, I think. Uh, yeah, it's colloquially known as Ratchet and Clank 2, but for the PAL markets, it was changed to Ratchet and Clank 2, locked and loaded. Yeah. Uh. So, a little bit of censorship, but uh, it was released November 11th, 2003 for PlayStation 2, PlayStation Exclusive, uh, developed by Insomniac Games and published by Sony, and it's a third-person platformer shooter-y game, I guess. I guess. Yeah, sort of. Action platformy. Action platform. Most games we can throw the word action just in front. <laughs> yeah, because, right. Uh, I mean, unless it's something. Well, like I mean, cr 
Condemned wasn't really an action game. Until Dawn wasn't either. There was some action. We didn't do it. Okay, so everything's either action or a puzzler or an action puzzler. So it's either action or not action. You know what, scientist? <laughs> <laughs> really pushing it, scientist. Yeah, really <laughs> <laughs> but uh, who uh, have any of us played this game? Let's start there. I have several times. Of course. Yeah. So guess who picked it, everybody? <laughs> <laughs> of course. Yeah. <laughs> Uh, why don't this you go ahead and give us a little, maybe a little uh, recap from the first game or a run into this game. Uh, how would you explain this to someone who's never heard of it, Dr. Scientist? Well, it's a third-person action platformer. Is it? Thanks, bro. But uh, in the first game, you, I think there was Drek, I think his name was, was trying to build a planet for his race of, I forget what they were called, Blargians maybe? Yeah. It was Sounds right. Ca- Chairman Drek, yes. Yes. And uh, you stop him from destroying all the planets. You become a hero. And this game picks up, I think, a year or so afterwards. Six months. Six months. And uh, Ratchet and Clank are kind of just heroes lounging around, doing hero things like pimping products and opening up Chinese food places. Totally normal hero shit. Yeah, it's what heroes do all the time. <laughs> <laughs> Absolutely. And... Uh, they show, and then it cuts to a guy who we find out is Abercrombie Fizzwidget. One of the and, best uh, names in gaming. <laughs> <laughs> from from a different galaxy, and he, I guess, kidnaps them. That's how he hired them. Well, he kind of teleports them without them. Oh, yeah, true. Uh, Technically kidnapping. And he tells them he wants to hire them to uh, help him with his problem. Sweet, and what problem is that? Uh, there was a a bioweapon, I guess they call it, a bioexperiment that was a, a thief absconded with. Nice word. Um, yeah, <laughs> they did say it was a biological experiment. Yeah. And uh, he's, they want Ratchet to train, and Clank's going to do some accounting work for them, I guess, because that's what robots like to do. <laughs> yeah, well... I mean, they they do math. We went over algorithms, remember? We went over that earlier. Yeah, that's what, science, that's yeah. what all robots do. And that's where the game picks up after their two weeks training and whatnot. You're leaving out a very important part here, Dr. Scientist. Uh, okay. That Clank not only got offered the accountant, but he also got offered an apartment and a robot uh, masseuse who I'm assuming fucks him? That I was, assume so. That was heavily implied, I'd say. What else do masseuses do? Massage? Yeah, a little bit. Massage your cock. Oh, oh wow. Good one, Zion. <laughs> <laughs> he nailed it. All right. Does he ever get it, though? The masseuse? Yeah. I, don't they show that one of the cutscenes? Like, he's a, on a table with a pallet, towel racked around him? I do remember seeing him in a towel, yes. He answers the door, but then they, they kidnap the masseuse. I will get to that. Maybe. Or maybe we just did. But yeah, the ga- <laughs> well, the game picks up when after Ratchet was doing his two weeks training, he gets to, I think it's the ship of the thief who stole it, the bio experiment, and he's trying to steal it back. Okay. Where did he get teleported to? Well, when he does it, he. What do you mean? Where did he get teleported? Like when they teleport him from their living room, they teleport him to like some ship, and then Abercrombie's like a hologram talking to him well, like i think what? it teleports him to abercrombie's office and then he trains and for two weeks uh, i just thought that was weird i didn't even understand i don't know if you guys ran into it or not but i definitely noticed that the cuts well the cutscene movie i watched wasn't great at telling you where you were no it, they weren't it was kind of but uh so you know we'll do the best we can obviously okay. yeah yeah there's, there's a lot of it jumps around a bit. I mean, I had to watch someone actually do a run of it so I could see where the game was at the point. So is this more of a open-world game? Uh, it's kind of like the last one where it's, li- it's opening at parts, but it's fairly linear. Like you have like, three tasks to do, and you can go on different planets in whatever order you want, that kind of thing? Yeah, yeah, sort of, yeah. And you have to hit certain key moments. Gotcha. So after the two weeks of training on your ship... Where do you go? You go to the thief's ship and you try and steal the pet back. But the thief catches you and takes the pet and then 
kind of leaves robots there to kill you. Yeah. And then Ratchet escapes. Classic Ratchet. Now, we got to talk about these commercials. Let's. What are thoughts, we, feelings? Which commercial? Any of them. I just, I had, I was done with them very quickly. Yeah, they got real annoying. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> like oh, they just, didn't show commercials in the one I watched. What? That's all it was. It's like instead of saying something, people would be like, I got to tell you something. Watch this. And then it's like. Then it's a fucking oh, info bots. Yeah, it wasn't, it wasn't like a secretly recorded conversation. It was a fucking <laughs> commercial that explained yeah. exactly what you had to do. Well, yeah, it tells you places to go. Kind of like the last game where it gives you new locations. Yeah, to go to. it seemed like there were a lot more in this one, though. That's because there's more planets. Oh. It just seemed go. like they overutilized it. Let's let's. I, I think they wanted to give you more information, and then it just turned into let's just play a stupid commercial video, and here it is. Yeah, that's the way it seemed to me too. Like, there's other ways to give people information, like finding journals or you know newspapers or receiving communication from somebody, and it was always a commercial in this. Or that's what it felt like, at least. Yeah. Well, they had galactic gladiators. That seems pretty neat. Yeah. That's another problem I have with it. Um, <laughs> what? I felt that the racing and the gladiator stuff felt very out of place. But, I mean, we can get to it when we actually get to the gladiator fights and stuff. Yeah, so the thief then hires thugs for less to help him. And they kind of just try and foil you. Do you think they're on Yelp? Should I check? Yeah. <laughs> yeah, what are they reviewing? Maybe Angie's list. They seem pretty bad. I'm looking, no, it doesn't look like it's on Yelp at the moment. None around here, at least. Uh, that's a bummer. Yeah, if it isn't around D.C., it's not going to be anywhere. <laughs> <laughs> now, maybe it's just West Coast, like in and out. Oh, <laughs> maybe, yeah. It's not the right galaxy, guys. But you uh, try and chase down the, the thief, and uh, there's a cut scene where the thief kind of kidnaps Ratchet. Okay. Kidnaps Ratchet? I mean, Clank. Ah, yeah. I was distracted by him sucking on something. Whoa. <laughs> the cut. This was the cutscene where Clank got ripped from his front door while he's wearing the towel, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. I think there was a like a, a well, I can't say muscular, but a big robot that was giving him a massage right before that. Possibly, I don't recall if I saw that, but it makes sense. Uh, he did get a masseur and a fancy apartment. Yeah, yeah. I'm pretty sure it was the masseuse who knocked on the door, and he's like, "Ooh, I'm coming!" And then some big guy just pushes her out of the way and takes him. If I remember. Is the Masseur the same robot lady that shows up later in a couple times? No. Okay. All right. Good question. I was thinking the same thing. I did. No, that's kind of just a robot who's uh, starstruck by Clank. Can you blame her? (laughs) No, not really. He's a sexy sexy motherfucker. (laughs) (laughs) Yeah, yeah, you can do that. Or you can try and become a or join the biker gang to figure out where Thugs for Less is at this point. But you do go to the arena, too. So what is the point of the Gladiator games in relation to the story? Obviously, you can win them and get, like, upgrades. That was pretty clear. Yeah. I. Well, you need those upgrades, too. But don't you get Clank back here? No. The thief shows up, though, right? The thief sends, from what I saw, the thief sends Ratchet a message saying that they kidnapped Clank. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Return, oh, it's return, like... Turn to your own galaxy. Yeah. But then they just leave Clank on a table somewhere. And it's like... Well, they're torturing him. You just go pick him up and, like, didn't... Look pretty easy. But uh, yeah. I like how they separated them at the beginning here. Yeah. Like, Clank and Ratchet were both doing their own things for a little bit. It's kind of annoying because you can't double jump without Clank. Oh, that does suck. Uh, interesting. Double jump. This might be a topic for one of our special episodes, but double jump could be the greatest innovation gaming's ever seen. Yeah, you know how nobody ever pushes it to triple jump. They're just not brave enough. Because it's dumb. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, Duh, who triple, the fuck can triple jump? Yeah, he can't even triple jump in real life. Well, yeah, I mean, <laughs> we could talk about realistic double jumps. <laughs> I hey, maybe I can double jump. I never try. I try every day <laughs> when I wake up. I should start. <laughs> I mean, it wouldn't be very high. Anyway. Nobody told me how. So <laughs> I'd be able to get what, like two feet off the ground instead of one. 
Yeah, if you're lucky. Yeah, if I was lucky. <laughs> or, like, because the double jump just kind of gives you a boost. So if I could jump, like, two feet in the air and then double jump up to three, that's really not that impressive. It's not like I could no. hop on top of a school bus from the ground. That'd be dope. That would be. Work on it. Yeah, practice, man. Got to got to get up those those calves and the leg strength. I'll work on it. I'll let you guys. I'll I'll report back. All right, so sweet. And there's also a part in this game right now, in this story, where there's like a you're at, you're doing things for Megacore. That's who Abercrombie Fizzwitch Wizard works for. He's like the CEO. And uh, there are Gadgetron vendors in the galaxy because Gadgetron was from the galaxy you were from. Okay. And uh, if you had a Ratchet and Clank save file on your memory card, Gadgetron would give you the stuff you had in that game for free, like the couple of game. Uh, I think it was free or at a discount. That's pretty cool. That is awesome. I love when games because it was like, it was like a you were a Gadgetron customer before, so here. It's like their loyalty rewards program. Yeah. Yeah. Exactly. Well, Gadgetron way better than Blizzard or Bethesda or Mega or, or Mega. <laughs> No, we talked about this too. It was, uh, I think, Silent Hill. Like, if you had the uh, the gun cut, the gun plugged in from Time Crisis, you got an extra gun or something like that. Yeah, we talked about that. But anyway, yeah, there weren't many games that did that. But so uh, you eventually save Clank and track down the Thugs for Life meeting point. Thugs for Last, sorry, Thugs for Less. Yeah, okay. Do you guys remember the name of the dude? I wrote him down as T4L every time. Who was the dude who was the leader of Thugs for Less? Did he get a name? I didn't. I don't think I, I caught don't him. think so. Yeah. But he's in a lot of videos doing like motivational things for Thugs for Less. Yeah, they seem like a wholesome group. Yeah. Yeah, he promised them pizza parties. <laughs> My job doesn't even do that. I know, right? No, right? Bullshit. But uh, anyway, so Ratchet goes to save Clank, right? That's where we're at. We well, already saved him. Yeah. Oh, we already saved him. Got I'm him. behind again. Yeah. Because, yeah, you just was on the table when you got there. Oh, wasn't there a bit where the guy was trying to torture him and, like, Clank was too small? The lasers were, like, up above his head or whatever? Yeah. He messes up the first torch. He's like, or oh, this will happen to you. And then nothing happens. <laughs> so he has to do it again. Yeah, and he electrocutes him. And then he electrocutes him. It looked like he died. Yeah, I'm sure it's not tickling. Yeah. I don't know. All right, I don't fuck robots. I don't electrocute them. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> don't robots like run on electricity wouldn't that be awesome to get more of it isn't that how that works <laughs> if you yeah. drama that's like saying you, your body runs on blood so if you put more yeah. in there it's <laughs> that's a good point <laughs> just load me up with blood like it's gonna be a busy week <laughs> I'm tired I mean I could use some blood exactly I was probably some asshole in San Francisco trying to figure it out now I'm sure they already <laughs> tried it yeah don't they like take kids blood like transfusions for rich people. Is that real or is that a rumor? It's If it's a rumor, it's probably real. That's what I learned. <laughs> All right. <laughs> yes, we should believe every rumor. I agree. <laughs> yeah, pretty much. Exactly. And uh, go ahead. I was just going to say, all those rumors are based in truth. So we'll probably find out something way more horrifying if <laughs> yeah. anyone investigates. Anyway, I'm just talking so, my ass. Go ahead. What happens with the story here? You uh, try and go to the, the meeting point where the thief is meeting thugs for less so you can try and get this bio weapon back. And while you're flying there, it cuts to uh, Behind the Hero, <laughs> Clark story. That was good. The Behind the Heroes? Yeah, yeah the Behind the Heroes were funny. <laughs> and it talks about how after he was disgraced in the first game, he was selling bogus merchandise. Oh, yeah. And <laughs> he got caught doing that. Oh, this is when it's like... The groomer, groomomatic, or whatever, crotchetizer, or whatever it's called, <laughs> personal hygienator. Yeah, and then Ratchet's like, "Oh, that's why my ass itches." <laughs> <laughs> so, I completely forgot about Captain Quark until I saw him in this video. I was like, "Oh yeah, wasn't he disgraced himself in the previous game?" But I don't remember why. He uh, was working with Drek. That's right. Because he was he was trying to become a hero again. Because he was yeah. just trying to make money. It's all about the money for yep. this guy. You uh, chase the thief around for a little bit. Oh, the thief's about to launch the, the little blue guy on a rocket. Yeah. Yeah, you chase him to an ice planet, and he ties the. you fight the thief in a battle here. And you beat him and save the pet. 
Mission accomplished. You did it. Game over. So, uh, what are your thoughts? Did you like the story? <laughs> um, it felt like the game wasn't over, you know? Oh, okay. It was only oh, like two right. hours long. I mean, even for PS2 days, it's pretty weak. So, Abercrombie Fizz Widget contacts you and tells you to meet him on this planet so he can get the pet from you. So, you fly to the planet and he shows up and crushes your ship. Oh, that was a great moment. I really enjoyed that. <laughs> He just, like, yeah, you got insurance. just lands right on top of their ship, destroying <laughs> it. Like, oh, my bad. And I don't know if he's actually, if he meant to do that or if he just honestly screwed it up. Uh, I think by what you find out later, he, he meant, meant to, do to do it. it yeah. But also what you find out later, he could have been the kind of guy that screws yeah, up. Right. You know? like Fair could enough. Could go either way. So, yeah, you, you hand him the pet and he offers to give you a ride. Of course. And then he accidentally ejects you out accidentally yeah see i thought that was malicious like he did that on purpose but then probably did but they're like calling him up later yeah like nothing happened yeah they think he just is stupid well i believe clank is like you thought he did that on like by accident and then ratchet says something like yeah you know he's confused probably it's probably fine it's there's nothing weird about this he had a busy day he's all excited Yeah. yeah ratchet is a little naive here yeah he was in the first game too if i remember yeah Fucking idiot. <laughs> he was a little bit more selfish in the first game, but he's a little. He's growing on me. <laughs> and then the the thief shows up and asks for the pet back kindly. Oh, yeah. And then you're like, I ain't got it. Yeah. And then the thief trips and helmet comes off and you see it's a female Lombax. But. But. Yeah. Yeah. Do all female Lombaxes have their tails on their head? That's an just amazing idiot. question. Or, I was that no, she had a ponytail. Oh, well, then it's a ponytail. But she didn't have a regular tail like he does. Unless it's in her suit, yeah, which is be. weird. Yeah, I mean, who the fuck would do that? <laughs> <laughs> but uh, the thief then explains that she used to work for Megacorp and was trying to stop them from releasing this pet because the pet's dangerous. Do we learn that here or do we learn that way later? Maybe later. I think she says something here like, oh, we got to get it back. Yeah, she said you made a mess of everything. Yeah, you done goofed, kid. Oh, she does say, she does give them the info bot that says go here, and then you'll figure out exactly why. Um, She couldn't have just said that info, but, you know, whatever. Well, I think it's it's more of a, more for you to believe it if you see it yourself. I guess, but. And did we mention her name? Angela Cross is her name? No, Uh, yeah, but that is her name. Yeah. I just thought it was the way they introduced her. It was like a reveal, and I was like, "Wait, was this? Was she in the first game?" That's uh, Sandra Bullock's name in the net. Is it really? No, I just need <laughs> <made> that. <laughs> Dude, we will, you totally had us. We were both yeah. in. <laughs> <laughs> oh, that was good. I, I should have like, the camera. <laughs> Dude, sometimes cool... you say these lies with such confidence. I'm like, really? <laughs> <laughs> Bravo, bravo, sir. I don't even sure Sandra Bullock's in the net. Yeah, yeah she, she definitely. Oh, is she? Okay. We weren't questioning that part. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> but uh, if you were, won't, oh boy, words are tough. If you were <laughs> wondering, her name is actually Angela Bennett. That's oh, that's fifty percent correct. Damn. Did you? Uh, there's no way you put that together. No, I just actually stole that line from uh, Psych. Oh. <laughs> but damn. I. Kind of fit. But I didn't know the name was actually Angela Bennett. Angela Bennett, B, one letter off, man. That's you should have just you you're too honest. You should have just went with it. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, you know, I don't want to tell your business. Anyway, so this So yeah. So you uh you come across some yogi, I guess. Yeah, and, fake yogi. Yeah, and yeah. <laughs> he asks for crystals and he'll fix your ship with chi or he calls it chai yeah so you collect a couple crystals and he fixes your shit for you oh is this like the uh the shaman guy who's like possessions aren't anybody's yeah that guy yeah and i'll I'll give you uh bolts if you bring me crystals kind of felt like these crystals were like drugs to him maybe i mean they come out of rocks yeah it's like crystal meth yeah. Oh, there you go. Probably. He does seem like a meth head. He did have the teeth. <laughs> this is actually, I read a, a, an allegory for the war on drugs in America. This game. Think about it. Yeah. Think about well, it. Well, it all 
it's more of everything. a metaphor than an allegory. Oh, whoa. Split hairs. <laughs> like a smart guy over here. Yeah. They don't call me Dr. Sign just for nothing. <laughs> yeah, seriously. College boy. Mm. Anyway. Oh, this is when you see the other behind yeah, the... The second quark behind the hero <laughs> after you leave. I just have... He flushes himself out of prison. <laughs> yeah. Because he owes six billion bolts and and things. And yeah, he flushes himself out of prison <laughs> to escape. That's so, so good. <laughs> The picture it shows when I'm doing it too. Is yeah, so he's just like in a toilet. Uh, whew. I have to be honest; I don't remember that part at all. <laughs> <laughs> the set, it's the second behind the hero. Yeah, he probably got tired of seeing the pop up for the He's like, God damn it! Is this but when yeah. uh, our friend the plumber found the bobblehead or stature in the shitter? That's coming up in a little okay. bit. Okay, I'm sorry, I already ruined it. But let's let's get to it. <laughs> let's hurry up and get there. <laughs> So you go to the test facility and you find info bots that show that the bioweapon becomes violent and attacks people. Yeah. And you're the first person to see this video. Yeah. But I mean, Angela Cross knew it because she did the research. She on made it. the video. Uh, but what I don't understand is why would the company. You know what? We'll just we'll wait till the end. It's, this is an end question. Sorry. OK. Yeah. You'll find out by the end. I know what your question is. So. uh Ratchet says, oh, we got to warn Abercrombie. And you contact him, and he doesn't really answer your questions and sounds really stupid because he is dumb. Right. And he says, we'll meet at the disposal thing, blah, blah, blah. Meet me here. So then you head off towards where Abercrombie says he'll meet you the second time. And we should clarify that at this point, Ratchet believes that AF just doesn't know anything about how dangerous it is. Yes. So he's trying yeah. to help out AF, being like, dude, what's yeah, going he, on? He thinks that it's he just take the thing and he doesn't know anything about it because he's just the CEO of the company. Right. Like, he was not aware of this danger. Yeah. Yeah, he's just trying to make money by selling the pet. Yeah. He doesn't know that it can eat things. And then there's a cut scene right here where Thugs for Less gets a call from somebody who you don't know at this point mm -hmm. who try and hire them from out from under Angela Cross. And, of course, they get paid more, so that's what Thugs for Less does. It's in the contracts, really. Yeah. But apparently their contracts don't mean shit because they break them for whoever pays more money. That's well, probably that could be clause. in the contract, yeah. yeah. It's a clause if someone pays more. Sorry. Would you that's sign it. that? Do you think that's a good business model? <laughs> <laughs> it works for them. Yeah, I can't argue with that, I guess. <laughs> I don't know if it's in the contract, though. <laughs> I mean, they're thugs, though. I yeah. mean, do you expect them to keep a contract? I guess if you are hiring mercenaries, you kind of... Got to expect a little bit of backroom dealings. Yeah. Fly to this disposal thing, and the defense grid asks for the password, and Abercrombie gave you a password, and Clank tries to put it in, and it doesn't work. I forget what the password was, but... I don't know. I don't know if they say it. I just remember Ratchet saying something like, are you sure you put it in right? And, he's, and Clank's like, yeah, I'm a fucking robot. Like, of course I did. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I didn't mess it up. Yeah. That was a pretty good so that, Yeah, they, you have to do like any, a little flying around in a ship scene here. That's just kind of an annoying part of the game. Yeah. And uh, Then you call Fizz Wizard back and be like, yo. Yeah, dude, where are you, bro? He's like, what's the deal? Give me the wrong password. And he's like, new phone, who this? <laughs> <laughs> he's like, oh, wait, is it Wednesday? Oh, sorry. Yeah. I was at this weapons facility making commercials for Megacorp. So here's my pontification, though. Uh, if all AF wanted was the experiment so he could sell it, why would he leave Ratchet and Clank alive? Why wouldn't he just shoot him and let them die here? And do not say just to advance the story of Ratchet and Clank. Because doesn't he choose to get them thrown in prison? He does get them arrested then. They go to Thug for Less prison. The private which prison. Which looks pretty which nice. We, as we all know, yeah. private prisons, great idea. Yeah. Well, you do find out that he's the one that hires Thugs for Less. Yeah. But he could have Whatever. He didn't kill him. Whatever. I don't know. He's not a killer. Yeah, he's really not. I think he's keeping him around for the end. Try to make him look bad, you know? Yeah, he's. I mean, he's not a bad guy, per se. He's not like a thug. For less. Yeah. <laughs> uh, I, used to, I knew one of you two was going to say that. <laughs> oh, no. so, so if you guys started a thug business, what would it be called? 
Don't don't answer yet. Think about it. We'll get to it at the end. Thug All life. Right. I was gonna say thugs. Thugs are us <laughs> with a backwards R. Ooh. I could take all those toys for us stores and turn them right into it. <laughs> you know what I was thinking about the other day in traffic, and it made me laugh hysterically. I looked like a crazy person in the car next. Grundle? No, <laughs> no. I thought of your uh, business venture, Crazy Cutting Cucky's House of Havesies. <laughs> <laughs> I forgot. Oh, wow. It just popped in my head, and I started laughing because <laughs> that could be the best name for a business that. Would ever exist. <laughs> Just the house of Havsies. I, I totally forgot about so that. So did I. We were going to make it a sketch at one point, and it'd be like a infomercial type, but he just cuts everything yeah. in half. Yeah, I remember that. That was so good. Yeah, I was going to show a guy struggling to cut things in half. It's like, how do you do In it? black and white, like he just takes a hand off or something. Yeah. <laughs> nobody steal that. We might do that one day. You can cut this out so nobody gets it. Yeah. <laughs> No, they're only our Patreon subscribers will get this part, this gem. <laughs> after we wow, we have Patreon. someday, someday mm. we may, maybe might beg for money. Who knows? Maybe. Hey, I'm, I'm not above that. <laughs> no. I don't want to be one of those because I don't pay for any podcasts. Fuck that. It'd be nice to make the money back for the mics. <laughs> that would be nice. <laughs> <laughs> Let's not get greedy. <laughs> <laughs> All, most of our budget goes to that Big League Chew and now the fun dip. So. <laughs> yeah, seriously. Yeah, we're getting by. Anyway, so where, does, where do we go from here in this crazy mixed up story? Well, you and Clank, well, Ratchet and Clank, because you're both you, head to the weapons facility where he's recording the commercial to try and catch up with Abercrombie Fizz Widget again. And then <laughs> uh, you go through it, and Angela Cross contacts you. Old AC. Yeah. Is this the one where she's like hiding on Thugs for Life's ship? Yeah, and then they yeah, because she finds out that they're not working for her anymore. Yeah, so why don't you go on the ship just to try to find out who they're working for? Yeah, I think so. It's just nosy. <laughs> Is this where she does? I I remember the call you're thinking of. Yeah, because then they find her and they like they find her immediately. Her. Like who's talking over there? Yeah, because she sneezes. Yeah, and she pretends to be a cat. Oh, that's right. Yeah, it's like meow. And these, and he, the for you know, rare turn in a game where the thug's like, ah, I'm not buying that. Get back in your cell. <laughs> <laughs> so, and after that, you see she's caught, and uh, you see the commercial that Abercrombie recorded. They show that, which is them trying to market the new dangerous bio thing as a pet called the Proto Pet. Oh, this is where yeah. we hear the name first. The Proto Pet name. Yes. Which I enjoyed the Proto Pet commercial, actually. That was one of the interruptions where I was like, this Where's works. Where's attacking a little kid? <laughs> <laughs> oh, the Proto Pets are such a pain in the ass to fight in the game, too. Take your word for it. Is this where you see the, the news program that's like all these people getting killed by Proto Pets behind them? Not yet, but. And they're just like talking like it's fine. <laughs> yeah, like it's a. A flood that's like six inches deep. Like, well, we're standing here in the waters of, you know, it's no big deal, whatever. All these people are dying behind me. <laughs> yeah. It's fucked up. Yeah, this is, a, this is a dark, dark series when you really think yeah. about it. It's one of my favorites. It's about the dangers of capitalism. capitalism yeah. Corporate espionage. Really yeah. Yep. It's all capitalism. Hired goons. Well, then, From yeah. Us. After you see all of this... I believe the thugs catch you and take you to the prison ship. Okay. Yes, everyone does get captured again. Yeah, and then there's a prison breakout where you... Oh, wait, this is where they have the Thugs for Less prison commercial. <laughs> yep. Yeah, yeah. Where they're like, it's actually super nice, you know, you get to do it. And they, that's the bit, that it's a super nice place to go. And then that's where Clank says, doesn't he say something along the lines of, I assume you all have vegetarian options as well. <laughs> <laughs> yes. Because right when they catch you, they show you the pri the commercial for the prison they're sending you to. Which, is yeah, that necessary? Whatever. Yeah, I mean, you're already going. It's not like you have a choice. And this is where the game starts to really ratchet up the difficulty, too. So awesome. you So you break out, and then, then we run into your favorite character. That's when Clank's girlfriend breaks you out, right? Yeah. And they totally go out to have sex, right? Like, that happened. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, she's like, follow me. And then, yeah. 
And Ratchet Clank's can't go. Only I can go. And isn't yeah, Ratchet like, don't take too long, stud mutt, or some kind of crazy <laughs> yeah. shit? Yeah. Save some pussy for me. <laughs> <laughs> it's heavily inferred that he's about to go bang out this robot. Yeah. Yes. But he eventually does save, like, break you out of the cell. Eventually, yeah, when he's done doing his business. <laughs> Plowing. Plowing. Laying yeah. pipe. You make it sound so sexy. <laughs> <laughs> it's practice. <laughs> You had to practice talking about sex constantly. <laughs> like plowing. <laughs> <laughs> aye, aye. So you break out. And in the cutscene movie I saw, this is where you run into your favorite character, the plumber. Oh, yeah. That was a great bit. Uh, assuming that he only showed up the one time in your cutscene movie. It was probably the same one. But uh, yeah. he's like, oh, and he finds the Captain Quark statue in the shitter. And he talks to him. He's like, all right, see you guys in like about a year. And yeah. Clank's like, what does he mean by that? <laughs> I was going to be like, don't they have people in this other, and this is their own galaxy that can do that? Oh, yeah, that's right. Shh. And he completely just, well, you know, whatever. They are, I get paid travel time. Don't, don't think about it too much. You know? <laughs> it was a good bit. That, that I really enjoyed that part of the game. Yeah, that's funny. Yeah. It's a completely optional part of the game, too. But that's, that, that makes it even better. They don't try to force the references down your throat. <laughs> yeah, is this where you find the fucking the hypnomatic? There's some guy with a sock puppet on his head. Well, yeah, you have to trade for parts of it so you can get it together. He's like hypnotizing himself with a sock puppet. It's fucking weird. Oh, right. I was wrong because now is when you see that Angela Cross is on the fleet. Oh. But. Oh, okay. Yeah. See, I'm ahead of myself. Yeah, me too. Did you guys read the Wikipedia article about the plot? No. Okay. Why is it difficult to follow? No, it's it's very streamlined and it's actually pretty good, but when they first announce Angela, they like, "Oh, this is the thief and it, she was working for Megacorp." Like they release all those details right in the character description. Uh, uh, so if you sta- the way you're reading these off is like sounds like the Wikipedia. It doesn't matter. It doesn't matter at all. All right, where are we, scientists? Because I'm fucking... Well, the thugs catch Angela Cross, and then you go to save her. Yeah, okay. The, you also run into the Quark fan here in the movie I saw. That you trade the shit-covered action figure for an armor magnetizer. Of course. Uh, of course. Yeah. We've all been yeah. there. Yeah. <laughs> but uh, I didn't see in the cutscene movie, but I think it's somewhere in here. You also... You escape, obviously, but you also help Angela escape? Yeah, you, yeah, you, you save her from definitely save life. her. And then where do you all go together? Well, you find out that Megacorp has got all these proto pets ready to ship, and this is where she tells you she she used to work for Megacorp in the thing. Oh uh, yes, yes. So you try and go to the place where they have all the proto pets ready to go. I like guess a it's stock. a big yeah big yard yeah big stockyard. So you fly there, and this is where you get the final. Uh, Behind the hero for Quark. Oh, uh, yes. By the way, just a side note, the guy who does the voice acting for Captain Quark mm-hmm. does a damn good job for Captain Quark. <laughs> really, like, honestly, that's, that's a good voice actor. Like, It's just so amazing to me that if you, di- if you showed me no visuals whatsoever and you're like, okay, you tell me if this is a PS1 game or a PS2 game, like you can tell pretty much instantly by the quality of the voice acting. That's not at all where I expect you to go with that. <laughs> yeah. Would you agree, disagree? I agree, I agree, yes. Yeah, they definitely up the game. Well, it's like this is where it started getting taken seriously, I guess. Yeah. Full show. When was this at? 2003? Yep, yep, 2003. So 16 years ago it was pretty good. Post 9-11? Yeah, two yeah. years, just two years. It was still very fresh in our minds. Yeah, it sure was. They still was a huge hole in the uh, Never forget. Can't. <laughs> <laughs> so in this behind the hero, it just says that Quark has disappeared from the galaxy. I don't remember what the galaxy was called from the first game, but he nobody knows where he is, and he's kind of he. It turns into like a unsolved mysteries. Yeah, show. Sort of, like, <laughs> like Robert Stack shows up. If you've seen him, he could be hanging by his neck in his fucking closet for all. I was just time. gonna say that. <laughs> we were all thinking it. We were all Scenario thinking. one: he could be hanging by his neck in a fucking closet. I love how they can't, like, when it cuts to that scene, he's, like, hanging in a closet and the guy's smoking. (laughs) (laughs) 
I like when they, they keep cutting back to Robert Stack in the office and there's more people playing solitaire every time they cut back. <laughs> so by the end, everyone's just sitting on computers playing solitaire. We're talking about the movie Basketball for you kids out there. <laughs> if you haven't seen it's the movie Basketball, film. it's from the dudes who made South Park and it's fucking great. It is classic. Right here on the Malaka Laka Board of Friendship. <laughs> but back to the game, guys. Yeah, yeah. I wouldn't be so, jet lagged at shitting curry. <laughs> Sorry. So many great lines. Your life is spinning out of control. The whole world is out to get you. That's such a good song. Is it? Look out ahead. There's a truck changing <laughs> lanes. There's a truck lanes. changing lanes. You got some yellow crumbs on your upper lip. And those warts <laughs> on your dick are going to go away unless you start using topical ointment every day. Sorry. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> you got to convince them it's all part of some guy's irretrievable plan. <laughs> All right, guys. Sorry, I mean, a cinema classic, an American cinema <laughs> classic, and we it deserves our mention. But so, yeah, yeah, a little tangent. Let's. let's move. So at this point, you decide to split up, and Angela Cross is going to get her ID so you can get in the Megacorp building. Oh yeah, and I, you, this is where you go to the commercial with the proto pets destroying the planet. Yeah, and the news person. News person is just like, yeah, they're breeding really fast. It's a great seller. <laughs> Everyone's got one. <laughs> yeah. You can see them jumping around in the background attacking people. Yeah. It's fucked up. So you go to that planet to try and save the planet while she goes to get the ID. And this planet is probably the hardest level in the game. But you also get to the guy who makes you the hypnomatic. Yeah. Guy, guy looked like he was from fucking like Ren and Stimpy or something. <laughs> With the... This duck on his hand. And yeah. Just... Like his sock puppet's talking to himself. He's like, and then you're hey. falling asleep, going sleepier. This game definitely has characters. Yeah, it's pretty cool. He was my favorite. I kind of like Slim Cognito. <laughs> He's pretty good. I'm, I'm, You know where my horse is hitched to. It's the plumber. The plumber. It's obviously the plumber. <laughs> I thought it might have been Skid McMark still. <laughs> was he in this if game? Me, if I didn't see him in the No, I didn't, I didn't see him. Ah, uh, no. bummer. He's so good. <laughs> Hoverboard champion or something like that? Was that what he was? Yeah, yeah. Sure was. One of the greats. So you save the the planet who's getting attacked by all the protopets they bought. And then you head off to get the Megacorp ID from Angela. Yeah. So is was I correct? I, if my if my notes are right, the thought process was if they kill or subdue or whatever the original pet, yes. the other ones will fall in line or just die. How does this work? That's the plan. Well, they try and because all the proto pets are made from the first one, so their their plan is to steal the first one so they can't make new ones anymore. Yeah, but they the news said they were breeding like crazy. Yeah, I know. But so, well, how would that help? Whatever you try and break into the factory. <laughs> and the right. All right, yeah, let's move it on. <laughs> let's move it right on. So, so you get to the the factory and you get to the proto pet room, and this is where. Abercrombie Fizz Widget shows up and you hear the whole plan, what his plan was and what happens here. It's total like a like a Bond villain thing, right? Yeah. Like, oh, well, here's the whole plan, by the way. You got you guys were hanging out. And they reveal that uh, Abercrombie Fizz Widget is actually Quark. Dun, dun, dun. And his plan, his plan to become a hero again, since he was defamed in the first game, was to... Get the proto pets, release them, and frame Ratchet and Clank for it. And then he was going to save the, the the galaxy and become a hero again. Because Angela has a weapon that stops all the proto pets. Yeah, she had, she made when while she worked for Megacorp, she made a thing that could calm down the proto pets and stop them. And he was going to use it and become a hero now. The and Ratchet so and Clank well. was going to be uh, the classic villain. Quark. Yeah. Which I don't really. Un- it seems like this plan took a lot of work when he could have just done some other heroic shit. You know what I mean? Like if he put his energy into actually being a hero, he could have worked his way back. How did he know that the proto pets were bad? I don't know. Because he, he kidnapped the, Ab- the real Abercrombie Fizz Widget. Yeah. So maybe that's how he found out. But Or he was working in the. Try to remember if in a scene that they showed that he found out about it somehow. Yeah, but, I don't know. I don't remember. But the quirk? Yeah. Quirk AF or real AF? 
Quark AF. Quark AF. Quark before he was AF. Yeah, like where where did he come up with this idea? Uh, how do you know the proto pets? Unless were bad? he just wanted to become Fizz Widget and figure something out, and then he just saw this. Well, he was. There is a cutscene where they show him dressed as Steve, his alter identity that nobody knows. Oh yeah. Oh, that's right. I th- I think he found out about the proto pet somehow there. Fair enough. I can't remember exactly what it was. But yeah, the this you get the thing and then he tries to hit the button on the whatever, I can't remember what it was called. Elixomorph. Elixomorph. Duh. <laughs> to uh to tame down the proto pets and have them stop attacking everybody and be the hero of the day. But it just enrages the proto pet more and it becomes a big annoying boss fight. Oh. Um, why didn't it work? Well, then you beat the proto pet. And you find the real Fizz widget. And you did not to correct you, but you did leave out the part where the proto pet then ate Captain Quark. Yeah. Yep. yep. Well, he does spit him out when you beat him. That's true. Sure does. It takes a long time to digest. It's like a python. <laughs> it takes it takes months. But the real Fizz widget comes out and he says, "Oh, you saved the galaxy!" Oh, blah, blah. and then they fix the electromorph because Ratchet just says the battery was in backwards. Ah, uh, of course. Classic Quark yeah. screwed up. Fucking Quark. It's going to take months to figure out how the, the, ba- the batteries are. <laughs> and then you press it, and the protopets are all tamed, and Ratchet and Clank save the day. Do you think Again. You think Again. even though they're tamed, they still breed really fast? I don't know and if they actually just... breed. I think it's just they all come from I'm the first protopet. You, that's I what the lady well, I know she said it. No, she did. She absolutely did. But I think you're getting into a weird moral gray area. <laughs> Where it's like, they're evil, so they're screwing all over the place. <laughs> <laughs> now it's like, oh, they're good now, so they're all demure and don't fuck as much. I'm just saying, like, like they're animals. if they're still going to like breed like crazy, there's still going to be a problem. Yeah, but... I mean... Maybe they won't. Maybe they're all... They're introduced species. <laughs> Come on. Then just start eating them. It, it's, it'll be fine. They're toxic. You're toxic. Well, it, this also, conversation is toxic. Yeah. <laughs> you find that that robo girl who likes Clank was also hurt, and then you fix her. Like, oh, yeah, we'll fix her. Don't worry, Clank. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. And then she's the next cut scene, the mid-credits cut scene, I should say. Uh, she's fine. The the robot that Clank is fucking, she's fine. Yeah. Yep. Or and they show the robot that's fucking, like, getting her. Yeah. Is this done with Clank? Yeah. You know, who says she's not using him for sex? Not calling her a gold digger. <laughs> oh. I'd say more of a star fucker situation. That's a hot take. <laughs> We're going to get letters about this for sure. Oh, boy. Yeah, and then is the final scene just Quark? Yeah, Quark as a test subject for <laughs> Mega Corp products. <laughs> the crotchetizer? Yep. What is the intended purpose of that? Because <laughs> it looks know. like a huge metal hand that grabs a dick. That's. I think that's all it does. Yeah, I'm pretty sure that's all it does. <laughs> okay but he seems to not mind his job too much yeah he loved it <laughs> did he <laughs> um, before that yeah before the crotchetizer I'm gonna make a fully operational crotchetizer <laughs> <laughs> and that's it that's the game that's it that's everything so uh honest question I was thinking about is this a kids game I don't know I enjoy it like what's it rated Probably teen. Probably teen, yeah. It's, it's definitely not mature. There's a lot of kid-aimed things in this show, in this game, but there's a lot of like adult humor in it as well. Yeah. It's yeah, it's like The Simpsons. You know? It's for kids, but adults can see shit that kids don't yeah, get. Exactly. It's like everything, really. Did you ever watch Teletubbies? Holy shit. Yeah, it's rated teen. <laughs> Yeah, there's a lot of fucking going on in Teletubbies. <laughs> yeah, there's a sure lot of is. inferred fucking in this game. There's a lot of, like, dirty jokes that are kind of in there. Angela even says fuck, and it gets bleeped out. Yeah. At one yeah, point. Cause, but it means bleeped out. Yeah, they had to bleep and it out. Or most of the it. fucking that's shown is made-up monsters and robot fucking. It's not real fucking. Sorry, I don't... Ugh. Not offending that's the robots fucking, out there listening. That to is this, but racist. <laughs> it is. I know it is. It's a little bit bigotry on their part. But. It's a little bit. I mean, robots are people, too. Actually, by definition, I suppose they're not. No, they're not. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> huh. 
Well, this is. But they look, have I'm feelings. not going to say anything else. I don't want to get in these muddy waters. This is going to. I respect <laughs> every robot's right to live, or die, whatever they like. I don't know. I don't. I don't know. I don't know. Yeah, live, die, fuck, don't. Yeah, I don't. I don't, I don't know. I don't know what I'm supposed to say. The four states of being. Yeah. <laughs> live, fuck, die, don't. Is that what it was? <laughs> Hashtag live, <laughs> fuck, don't. But I, I guess it. You know, I mean, a kid could play it. I mean, it's pretty difficult. It seems like it's it's for an adult or someone, I don't know, like fifteen or older. That's like, yeah, teen, yeah, teen. Yeah, would like it, but it's still a little in that familiar kid territory. Like it's cartoony at points. Captain Quark is just a ridiculous human being. But I mean, there's yeah. like a lot of fart jokes. Fart jokes are huge in like kid entertainment. They're f- fart jokes are always good. They are great. I'm not saying they're not great. <laughs> yeah. I- they're team plus. Dude, all all our podcast is is fart jokes. Pretty much, at, yeah. At least half of it. <laughs> Speaking of <laughs> farts, oh. and, uh, <laughs> I did it again. Uh, Let's get that I podcast laughing. Emmy. <laughs> the EGOT for podcasts. <laughs> yeah. EGOT for podcasts. I think it's they just call it a Source Award. <laughs> sure. Ch- Kids Choice Award. Oh, that'd be good. I'd kill for a fucking Moon Man. Or Dude, do we, award. <laughs> do we get know. to get slimed if we win a Kids' Choice Award? I hope I don't so. think you can do that anymore. Legally. Slime people? <laughs> <laughs> Somebody got real sick. Yeah, cancer. You're not supposed <laughs> to eat it. Well, you, you can eat it. It was rectum heard. cancer. Oh, Sorry. Sorry. I was on a roll. <laughs> I didn't think so, but. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Jesus. All right. Uh, so any anything else anybody wants to say about this game before we start wrapping it up? Nah. Mm, nah. Tell us your thoughts. Oh, you would want you, me to go first? On uh, okay. would you play it? Would you rate it? Did the story work for you? Oh, you fucking nailed it! I'm so proud of you. <laughs> I practiced it all day. <laughs> <laughs> I want to just get a, I just want to get the soundboard, and that'd be one of them. Yeah. <laughs> um, I it? think we should. We probably should have talked about this off air, but we should talk about. What would you play it would mean? Because obviously I I wouldn't play this game right now just because there's a whole shitload of new games that are out right now. You know what I mean? Yeah. Like, it, it would you I ever play it? Yeah, I thought that's I took that as it. Yeah. Like even at the time, like if if, if I rewind back to 2003, would I have played this? No, game? let's be fucking real here. <laughs> <laughs> there's no time, no time travel. travel. Come on. No, no historical context. Gotcha. Message received. Is there a possible future where you would put this game on? I don't think so. And, you know, like we normally say, maybe if they completely redid it, like Resident Evil 2 2019 style, maybe, but probably not. Um, so that answers what I play it. Did this story work for me? I think considering what this game is and what it was trying to achieve, I'm going to say the story did work for me. Um I was I mentioned it earlier. I don't I don't love the information dumps via commercials. I I think it's a, a very fresh and interesting idea that you can put in there, but they just went to back to that well like 10, 12, 14 times. I think I think they just overdid it with the commercials. Uh the other thing is the races and the gladiator challenges. Like they had a very coherent narrative about the proto pet, and then they're like, hey. Yeah, it's not super important. Just go go dick around at these gladiator events. It's fine. <laughs> Just go ahead. Just do whatever. Get to that when you get to it, you know? It was kind of tacked on stuff. Yeah. It felt it felt tacked on. I understand it, but you know, it makes sense as a mechanism to earn other upgrades. So So that worked. Yeah. I see its place and I see two thousand three as an area era when they were still kind of figuring it out. So I'm not gonna take too many points off that. So then that folds into what would I score it? Um, I think there's more good in this game than bad. So I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to go up to 15. Whoa. Game. Holy yeah, I, I think the, the beats it was trying to hit, I think it did. Was it perfect story-wise? No. But end of the day, a game with made-up animals – and Captain Quark in it. Uh, <laughs> yeah. It's supposed to be fucking fun first. And it was entertaining. So 15, that's what I'm going with. All right. All right. So what about you, uh, 
chump slap? What did you, what, would you play it? What'd you score? Did the story work for you? No, I don't see any future where I would play this. Not even if they remade it. Yeah, okay. Just not my, just not my, not my bag, you know. <laughs> sure, <laughs> sure. It's you know, it's not for everybody. Uh, the story, the story worked kinda. It it worked for what it was. You had to thwart some evil guy doing his evil shit but you didn't even know that till the end you're just trying to help everybody trying to save the world be a good guy yeah you i mean sorry to interrupt that's fine but uh for the most part part of your story was finding out that the corporation was releasing something that could be dangerous and then trying to tell the boss that's most of the game yeah, yeah. you're just trying to do the right thing yeah, not even be a hero. Just be like, hey, this is kind of fucked up. You guys should know about this. Or Yeah, this seems like it could have just been a regular day in Ratchet and Clank's life, you know? Yep, absolutely. So, yeah, I guess it worked. Um, what I score, I'll give it an 8. An a eight? good okay. solid 8. I mean, Quark, awesome. He deserves the 8 alone. <laughs> <laughs> nice. But that's pretty much it. Okay, well, you know, not as sweet as a 15, you know, whatever. But anyway, so, uh, <laughs> Dr. Scientist, it's your turn. Would you play it again? Would you score it? Did the story work for you? Well, I probably played it through three times, and I'd probably play it again. Ooh. If it was, I don't know, I like Ratchet and Clank, I, I the whole that. franchise. Uh, did the story work for me? I think so. The characters are idiosyncratic. And you, they're not similar to each other. You can't really ever get two of them confused. Okay, right. okay. Uh, I did like the story because as you're playing it, you have no idea Abercrombie Fizzwidge is Clark until right at the end. Quark. It kind of, and it's just Quark trying to become a hero again and you save the universe, blah, blah, blah. Typical story. Classic Quark. Yeah. See, I, I thought that he was a dynamic enough character that he would show up again. But I didn't see it him being AF. No, yeah. I think they did a pretty good job there. I do like the back and forth between characters because every character is kind of their own little personality. So they make interactions different. I did like the whole story. I like the whole thing. I gave it 14. Oh. Wow, out a boy. 37 total. Yeah. Papa Scotch had to one up you there. Yeah. <laughs> But I went first. How did I want to? <laughs> that doesn't make any sense. But uh, well, <laughs> fourteen for me is the same as a fifteen for him. We have different rating systems. Yeah, that's true. Yeah, we're def. Well, I'll speak for myself here, but yeah, please definitely do. not consistent <laughs> <laughs> at all with the race. I could be so much more professional about this, and I'm not. <laughs> I I just see the chart and I rated it between which games I think is not as good as, and yeah, which is way more work than I'm doing. On <laughs> <laughs> so uh. Scientist, what do you what do you like about the game? What parts do you like about it? I like it all. I like the characters and the story. The weapons are. Would you play it if the uh, the characters weren't as unique and no, fun? I don't think so. I don't think if it, if it even if it wasn't as jokey as it is too, because all the yeah. cartoons and stuff are. So the gadgets aren't enough. You need the jokes yeah. and the. And in this one, I think all the gadgets level up, so they become better and better and better. And then when you go to New Game Plus, you can buy advanced versions of them where they become even stronger. That's cool. Uh, it just it just works for me. Right on. All right, cool. So, uh, anything yeah. else anybody wants to add before we go ahead and close this episode out? I mean, I think overall I liked it. I enjoyed. It was I didn't... much better than the other games we've done in the past like five weeks. That's yeah. It's it has been a little bit of a rut. <laughs> we've been going <laughs> Sorry, that's both your opinions. <laughs> I mean, the only thing I really didn't like about it was the presentation with the commercials. Yeah, that but, got to uh, me. It's not, it's not really fair to dock it a whole bunch of points just for that. Nah. Because, I mean, video games are different. Like, they'll show you, for us, watching the cutscene movie, it's like, wow, they had a commercial every 10 minutes. But in the game, it could have been every two hours. Yeah, for all we yeah know. exactly. And you can go back to, back and forth between planets to get things. Sort of Metroidvania you that way. Interesting. And Metroidvania, is that where you can uh, 
go back to previous areas you've explored with new technology to get into whatever? You're learning. Yeah. I'm getting there, right? <laughs> it only took how many weeks we've been doing this? This is episode 40, I think. Almost 52. Damn. Now, I th- I'm pretty sure this is 40. Oh. Man, we're coming close to a year. Yep. Oh, it's going to be a special episode. <laughs> maybe. Just Pip Thor on the snare drum. <laughs> yeah. I mean, it, maybe we'll do something for 52. But uh, if you remember, we we started talking about this and doing this around the new year, but the first episode was January 27th, I think. Or 26th, something like that. I mean, that. we could go back and check, but yeah, that's, that's, that's not that's our bag. Better. I think we've made it very clear we do not research <laughs> things. <laughs> it's obvious, right? Yep, and yeah, and if you point. want something researched, this is, I mean, what do, I don't know what to tell you. This isn't the place for you. <laughs> but uh, let's go into our favorite segment of every week, which is Scientist Lock of the Week. <gasps> what was that? I don't shit? know. No, I just stopped. <laughs> All right. Well, every week we ask Dr. Scientist for a 100% guaranteed gambling pick, and he has never to this day gotten one incorrect. Good Not job, Dr. Scientist. Uh, so, this week, Dr. Scientist, who do you got? Uh, take my Steelers over the Colts. Straight win. Straight win. Straight win. I think there you they go. might be getting points. So, if you want to take the points, go ahead. I don't remember exactly what the line was. But either way, Steelers to win. Yeah. All right. Well, that's pretty easy. I mean, you know, you're going to take your money that you earned, hopefully, <laughs> honestly. And then you're going to go ahead and you're going to sell that money and then you're going to put it all in this game because it's guaranteed pick. Scientist has not been wrong yet because this is a sure thing. It's a sure thing. <laughs> <laughs> and it's a real sport, so you can bet on it, actually. It's all real sports. <laughs> you just got to find someone who will take the bet. Well, I don't know not yeah. to be whatever, Dr. Scientist. But <laughs> <laughs> I, I had a really hard time putting down a bet for the Montana Horseshoe. <laughs> championship last week I had to go to like four different bookies before someone took it <laughs> wow and the only reason he took you it is because Vegas had the odds out so you know <laughs> yeah I mean it's so you gotta find the right bookies that's half the battle yeah so uh, that'll take us to our favorite segment of every week which is Chump Slap's recommendation window <laughs> Thank you for that. That was great. So every week, uh, we ask Chump Slap for a recommendation, usually of what I'm trying to come to mind at this point, but I kind of had a shitty one, so we're just going to go with that. Nice. Chump Slap. Yeah. Can you give us a recommendation for the best power tool manufacturer out there right now? (sighs) For me? And this is for me. (laughs) Yeah, well, it's your recommendation. That's pretty clear i'm gonna say dewalt it's not a bad choice not at all i like the color steelers colors yeah black and yellow black and yellow way better than those assholes over at ryobi right with the green yeah fuck that, fuck right? that. who wants fluorescent green shit or orange yeah get that what are you going hunting there. with it yeah seriously scumbag yeah, it's very interesting now that we're thinking about it, because I guess all the brands have, like, black and then another definitive color, huh? <laughs> yeah. Huh. Most of them are, like, red or yellow. Milwaukee. Well, say, for example, someone came up with a uh, their college thesis on the, the color usage <laughs> and power tools, and they wanted to send us and email us that thesis. Where would they send that to, Sir Jump Slap? Well, they'll just send it over to... Plotty time at gmail.com. Almost that forgot the name. was there. an interesting <laughs> pause for a, an email you said 39 times. Right? No judgment. Order. All right, all right. So let's say uh, they wanted to comment on Chump Slap's pause right there, and they wanted to do it right now. How would they get in touch with us on social media, Dr. Scientist? At Plotty time on Instagram and Twitter. And I am keep refreshing Twitter right now so they can answer. <laughs> Perfect. Thank you. Appreciate that because obviously this is live. just another thursday (laughs) all right well that does it for us so i guess we'll talk to you guys next week later (laughs) 